<clears throat> Somebody wanted me to put together a video on what it takes to get a truck leased to a trucking company. And then we're going to do this like you don't have a job and you don't have a truck. Now, some companies may or may not hire you if you have no owner-operator experience. Some. It's, it's rare, but some, some won't. Um, first thing you need to do is ask the company, what are your age requirements on your truck? Because that could be a deciding factor if you can afford to go to work there. I mean, if you've got a thirty or forty thousand dollar budget, and they say we want two thousand and ten or newer, that rules you out. Okay, <clears throat> so you ask them that, and they say a certain year, and you say, okay, that's within my budget. I can find a truck. Blah blah blah. Then you do what they call a pre-employment, pre-hire. You fill out, actually you don't fill out, you answer some questions over the phone, the, the recruiter will go through some stuff. Uh, you're not gonna take a drug screen yet or any of that. They're gonna run your DAC report and they'll, and they'll say, okay, we'll hire you based on the information you give us if it turns out to be true and correct. Um, the trucking industry, is probably one of the very few industries that only hire because of your driver's license, okay? You've got a clean driving record, no accidents, and a good, you know, background with working with other companies, you're hired. They don't care, you're fat, you're ugly, you're white, you're green, you're blue, uh, male, female, male, female, both, they don't care. Um, so you go, you do your pre-employment, you say, okay, now you got to go hunt a truck. First thing you got to do though is make sure fifth wheel requirement, wheelbase requirement, and weight requirement. Um, some companies have a fifth wheel height requirement because their trailers will only accept say a 48 inch fifth wheel. If you buy a truck with a 52 inch fifth wheel, the trailer is going to be four inches too tall. Okay, follow me? Um, Wheelbase, some companies only want 265 and smaller, 242 and smaller, blah, blah, blah. You need to know that. And you also need to know your empty weight. If you go and buy you some big W900 265 wheelbase, you start loading a bunch of equipment on it, an APU, all of your junk, you're going to be 20,000 pounds. Whereas you go and buy you a little some freight line, you go buy you some little freight line or century, load all your junk up in it in APU, you're 17, 5, maybe 18,000. Big difference. Um, some companies have a tariff where everything they haul is basically 48,000 pounds. So if you've got a 20,000 pound Kenworth, you, know, you can't haul 48,000 pounds in a trailer. Um, piece of junk in my mouth. So you go and find all these requirements, now you go hunt a truck. You find a truck you want, and let's say you're buying it from a dealer. The dealer says, oh yeah, it's past inspection, good shape. Means nothing. Means absolutely nothing. The dealership will tell you anything you need to hear to buy a truck. First thing you need to do is ask the company, will they, will you accept an inspection from the dealership where I'm buying it. If they say no, you have to have it inspected at one of our facilities, you need to make sure you get it on paper. And they say, okay, the truck passes inspection. You say, okay, I'll buy the truck, but now I'm taking it to work at so-and-so, and if it needs any work that they find, you pay for it or give me my money back. Okay, if they say no, why would they say no? Because there's probably something they're hiding from you. Uh, chances are, more than likely, most big companies will accept the first inspection from the dealership where you're buying the truck from. At least that's my dealings with all these companies. That's, that's what they usually do, okay? Um, money. 
If you're gonna buy a truck and have payments, 1500 bucks a month, make sure you have two months minimum worth of bill money set back. That's truck payment, insurance, house payments, all your bills at home, you need two months of that, probably minimum. Because by the time you get through orientation, which will be a week minimum, you get through all of the BS, you finally get rolling, it's going to be three weeks before you can get your first check. Um, so by the time you know things start coming in steady, it's going to be a while. Uh, so I always tell everybody, you need, you need two months bill money, you know, set back before you do anything. Um, if you're going to buy a truck cash, I'd make sure you had some money saved up, even though you don't have any payments. Uh, you're still going to be three weeks to a month before you even get your first check, or at least your first decent check. Um, you know, and checks are going to kind of be iffy there for a little while till people get to know you, for one thing. And, you know, once you get the truck working, you know, the first thing everybody does, they want to fix the damn thing up. Stick a bunch of lights on it and a big bumper. But, uh, you know, basically, the, the companies I go to work for are places like Landstar. I was there eight years. Um, I like to be on my own. Most people know that. Um, Landstar is a good company. It's as close to being on your own as you'll ever get without buying your own authority. Um, you're responsible for everything. You got to hunt your own freight down. Um, you know, and when times were booming, pre-2006, uh, two cell phones, laptop with an air card, minimum. Because if you're not reachable, you're not going to make any money. And it's it wasn't uncommon to see me with my laptop on my pedestal between the two seat and the cell phone in each ear. I got one guy on hold, another guy trying to look for freight, and just you're, you have to hustle. If you're the type of guy that wants to make one phone call to your dispatcher and say, find me a load, and then you sit there and look out the window, man, sorry for you, okay? Uh, you'll starve to death in a matter of weeks there. You have to hustle at Landstar. Uh, Bennett, it's the same way. Mercer's the same way. Um, so, you know, those are, those are just the options you got, you know, when you go to buy a truck. Um, generally, what I tell everybody, if you don't have any experience at all, don't go out and buy some big-ass fancy truck, $50,000, $75,000. Keep in mind, you're physically going to learn how to drive in this truck, okay? You're going to be hard on it, you're going to be rough on it, you're going to bang it up. I would go out and buy me some little $20,000 Freightliner Century, drive it for a year. Then when you're done tearing it up and you learn how to drive right, learn how to use the clutch and how to use the transmission right, um, then go out and buy your first big truck. I mean, I don't know how many times I've seen guys get out of truck driving school or come out of retirement and go and plop down $80,000 for just some ridiculous truck with a 120-inch sleeper. Six months down the road, they're sticking a $3,000 clutch in it, um, drive shafts, U-joints, you know, bumpers and mud flap hangers because they're just learning how to drive. So there you go.